All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Huff. Uh, my uh, talk today is on OSINT or open source intelligence. Uh, it's not going to be a real technical talk. Uh, one of the creepiest things about OSINT is that just about anybody can uh, can do it. So. That's what I learned by being an OSINT creeper. All right, so we start with uh, defining OSINT. Um, this is a variation of the uh, military definition, um, and it's done in two parts, um, what it is and why we do it. Um, OSINT is publicly available information, plain and simple. It um, can be stuff you get at the library, online, um, something somebody posts on a sign outside of a storefront. Um, but OSINT is defined by the intelligence discipline. Um, the intelligence produced from publicly available information that is collected, exploited, and reported to address a specific intelligence requirement. Uh, that's a pretty tactical definition, uh, and I like it because of what I do. Uh, I am a digital forensics analyst for Stillinger Investigations. Uh, we're a PI firm out of Columbia, South Carolina. Um, I like that definition because most of the time in the lab, I've got a full computer uh, image or cell phone image, and there is a ton of information there. If I don't have a specific target um, to follow and investigate and report, um, you're just creeping around in people's stuff. So, you know, the tactical definition works for me. OSINT's broken down in a couple different areas that make it interesting to a lot of different people. Uh, government and military, um, they're going to be paying attention to information out there for foreign intelligence, you know, stuff on terrorism, politics. Um, in law, we're going to see court documents, arrest records, you know, inmate and prison records, that kind of stuff. Uh, business, you're going to be seeing copyright information, uh, financial reporting, uh, competition and marketing type stuff. Um, the security community, we all know red teaming. Um, going to be looking at network structures, account enumerations, IP addresses, SSIDs. Uh, and then there's the personal stuff, uh, addresses, date of birth, what you do for a living, who your family is. You know, That's the creepy stuff. Before we get uh, into the exercises, a quick talk about ethics. A um, gentleman out of UK uh, has a security blog up, and I borrowed this from it with his permission. Um, he just had a nice little segment of it that I think defines uh, the good way to do this stuff. Uh, OSINT is about examining information and data that's public, and it should not involve invasions of privacy. A legitimate researcher must know where the line is drawn between OSINT and espionage, the latter including stuff like eliciting information, uh, actual illegal network penetration, eavesdropping, other words, things that haven't proactively uh, been made public. Uh, working for a private investigator, uh, we walk an ethical line because um, we're regulated by South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, um, so ethics is easy for me to follow. <clears throat> but then there's the uh, regular disclaimer, don't be creepy. Um, again, the OSINT definition is out there for a reason. Um, being unethical is bad, but being a snoopy jerk is something completely different, so don't do it. A uh, little exercise I like to do at uh, these talks um, to help develop kind of the OSINT mindset when you're looking at stuff. Uh, I took this image off of a, a Facebook page last year. It's got a um, had a tag, something like, hey, look at this deal at Kroger, um, something like that. So uh, I, I throw it up there, and I, I like to look at a couple things. This is what the account owner wants us to see. Got an awesome deal, 78 cents a gallon. Um, put it up online for all my friends to, to brag to. First thing I want you to see, they just put 25 and a half gallons of gas into something. Uh, we can inference that they're in a SUV, truck, minivan, something like that. Second thing you want to look at is the reflection in the background. Bring it up a little bit closer. Can't quite make out the person, uh, but down in the bottom right corner you can see a tail light shape. Um, can't exactly get it, but the back of it does look like a larger vehicle, so we get a validation that it's probably a truck, SUV, something. So we can start working with that. Quick Google search for an SUV taillight. I was looking for kind of a distinctive half moon shape that you can see down in the reflection. Um, there's a few of them on here that are kind of close, but you know, no cigar. We'll refine it just a little bit. Throw in a used SUV taillight. 
I think it's the uh, fifth one on the top there. It was a dead hit when we looked at it in the in the picture a little closer. Click on that guy. We got an eBay listing for a Dodge Durango, 2004 to 2009. So from there, we can uh, jump to a couple different directions: uh, Cars.com, Craigslist, you know, public records, arrest records, news stories, maybe. Um, try to drill in maybe who's driving vehicles like this. Um, from there, you go into people searches, and you know that's that's unintentionally produced OSINT, um, but a good exercise to kind of get your your mind thinking in a certain way. This is unintelligently produced OSINT. Uh, people throwing you know credit card numbers out there is silly, but we see it quite often. Um, that was a Twitter post. Um, Thinking with an OSINT mindset there, we can research things like issue or identifier numbers. Um, you'll have several different websites that explain the first six digits of a credit card quite in detail, including regions and, and how that impacts it. Uh, the LUN algorithm uh, is the way to validate whether or not a credit card number is active, uh, valid mathematically. Is that part of OSINT? Not really, but the principles still apply there. So I like it. We're taking known given information applying knowledge or application of tools and producing intelligence. Thinking like that gets me uh, going over the last several exercises I've done the last year, um, coming up with a methodology. This is the steps I typically take when I'm looking at intelligence online. We'll start with our known items or data points all the time. You know, see what's already out there and, and put it out there, um, map it out. Just like the definition says, we're doing it for a reason. So set your intelligence goals. What data are we trying to get to based on what we see? We'll get our tools together and start you know, analyzing the known data points that we have. Start to analyze how those data points are connected. And then we'll pivot using the new data points. We can uh, find out what else we can find. Repeat the last three steps as necessary. Gather, analyze, pivot, and then validate. Is our data correct? Target data. Methodology, everybody got a little sleepy during that slide, so we'll rename it. OSINT, connect the dots. It's a little more fun. And we'll throw in a nice case study on it. <clears throat> last year in October in Columbia, this news story came out. Um, two gentlemen in two different vehicles get in an argument. One pulls out a gun and fires at the other guy. Um, Crime Stoppers threw this up looking for information. Surveillance uh, picture came up, big bright green phone number on the side of the uh, shooter's truck, uh, but they wanted some more information on the guy. Starting with known items, uh, out of the news story, we see Joseph Lamar Christmas is the, uh, the name, uh, age 39, the big bright green phone number from the truck, and area ties to North Carolina and South Carolina. We set our goals. Um, and try to find a photo of this guy, give it to Crime Stoppers. Uh, gather tools, Pipple, online search for information. Uh, we could throw in the phone number from the truck and uh, South Carolina as a starting point. And we're given Joseph Lamar Christmas, 73 years old, a um, couple of extra phone numbers, a couple of addresses, and uh, known associations, likely family members. So we look at that stuff side by side, the, the previous information, the new information, and uh, try to come up with some inferences from that. Joseph L. Christmas, age 73, potentially the uh, target's father. Uh, phone number on the truck brings up the father's info and not the target, so maybe we're looking at a family business. So let's look at the family a little bit. There I go back to my tools. Uh, Mike Bazell's Intel Techniques, uh, he's got an excellent uh, social media search uh, tools online. Um, his Facebook uh, search sets are, are very useful. Um, it's basically set up the right side of the screen, helps you find uh, an account or a target, and the left side of the screen helps you dig into that target's information. So using the right side, very quickly I can find all of the known associations from the Pipple search. Uh, inferences from that, um, it's all family members. Uh, there's no apparent account for the target Joseph. The uh, Joseph L. Christmas that I found was the father's account, had very little use. Um, so I start digging into the actual accounts to try to find the uh, chatterbox of the family. Eleanor had no pictures. Jay had no pictures. Mary had 20 pictures. 
Jason had 27 pictures. Margaret had 235 pictures. There's our chatterbox. So I go back to uh, Bazell's uh, left side of the screen, um, take Margaret's uh, username and uh, convert it to a user account number. Um, his tool lets you start running data searches against the user number with the Facebook's API. Um, I throw a search against Joseph and Joe, and boom, we just get a bunch of uh, pictures where she's tagged somebody named Joseph. Pull up some inferences there. It's my brother Joe. That's my brother Joe. So I think I got the guy. A couple different profile shots. How do we validate? Rest made in road rage shooting. Holy crap, I'm Batman. So quick common sense alert. Uh, don't leak your data if you're into privacy and make sure others aren't leaking the data as well. Uh, that's one of the things that most of us don't think about is other people can put our stuff out there and it happens quite often. Now, before you go being a crime fighter, talk real quick about covering your tracks. Uh, we all know as soon as somebody looks at our, our LinkedIn profile, hey, so-and-so checked you out. Um, you can see the uh, people you may know recommendations all over Facebook and, and Twitter. Um, so there's algorithms out there. Facebook just let a story about their 98-point creepy algorithm um, I think there's some stories where it's it's tagging uh, psychiatrist uh, patients uh, to friend each other. So yeah, obviously some issues out there, but uh, it will rat you out. So protect who you are. Uh, FakeNameGenerator.com is an excellent t source to uh, create a sock puppet account. Um, it'll give you a name, a, a mother's maiden name, an uh, occupation. Um, you even get a, a burner email account you can use uh, with this information um, automatically on there. So you cover who you are, cover where you come from. Um, Tor, Tails, virtual private networks, and VMs are great for this stuff. Uh, Tails is one of my favorites. It's a live operating system that you boot from a flash drive. Um, it automatically uses Tor through the network on the machine that you're on. Um, it's preloaded with privacy and encryption tools, and when you shut it down, it wipes the RAM from the system. Uh, being a forensic analyst, that's kind of cool to see. It's also free. Talk a little bit about the, uh, the tools that I use. Um, OSINTframework.com is an excellent resource. Uh, it's set up uh, on the left side with 31 categories of Intel. Each one of those cascades out to multiple tools that you can use to uh, drill into those categories. Um, at the time of this talk, there's about 690 tools on there, um, all valid and pretty much free or having trials. We already mentioned Intel Techniques by Mike Bazell. Um, the uh, the free trial video that he's got on there is about a 70 minute uh, primer to the Facebook tools that I was using. Um, it's well worth your time if, if you haven't used his site. I highly recommend it. He's got some other stuff on there. Anytime I go to social media OSINT, I usually land on uh, Mike's website. The reason both of those tools are so valid is because OSINT is uh, what I call the land of dead tools sometimes. Um, you'll have changes in the online landscape constantly, uh, be it security or privacy updates, uh, API changes. Um, somebody buys somebody out, transitions something into a paid business model, and all of a sudden your tools are, are not working. Um, and then sometimes things just get abandoned. We get busy when we're trying to put our cool stuff online for our friends. Um, I did a uh, analysis, of, I think 59 tool list from 2012. Um, about 58% of those were still valid. Um, just over 30% had been, you know, dead, partially functional, or abandoned uh, altogether. 11% um, of them went to a paid structure. Um, so there was quite a big fallout, about 40%. If you're into OSINT, these are some of the guys that I recommend uh, paying attention to right now. Um, they're out there producing uh, active projects and giving good updates on there. Uh, Mike Bazell's Intel Techniques, again, um, he'll shoot out an email monthly saying which tools are uh, you know, coming off because of uh, uh, outdated. outdated. Um, Justin Seitz, he's got a pretty good site automating OSINT where he's using uh, Python to automate this process a bit. Um, you know, If you want to get into the advanced side of it, I definitely recommend checking out his, uh, his work. Um, Justin Nordine, he runs the OSINT framework. 
Um, he's open to feedback when you find an awesome tool. And if you find one that kind of sucks, um, just let him know. Um, Micah Hoffman, uh, SANS instructor. He's got a website, webbreacher.com. Um, has some excellent talks and blog posts regarding OSINT. Um, so four people to pay attention to there. All right, OSINT speed round. Um, these are a couple of the uh, random exercises and stuff I've done over the last year. Uh, apparently I like to geolocate stuff because most of them involve taking uh, online contents and figuring out where they come from. So we'll kick through a few examples real fast. Uh, property data. This is coming off the OSINT framework. Melissa data website um, pulls public record for locations by map. So what's Melissa data say about the property we're in right now? <clears throat> you get approximate number of employees, uh, sales figures, um, SID, SIC identification numbers for classification of uh, the type of business. Uh, there's a contact phone number and information about the owners plus a whole bunch of uh, property information there. Highly recommend that you plug your own address into this and see where your starting points are if somebody finds your address and, and takes a look at what's on there. Wide open webcams. Um, this one has a pretty clear shot of the uh, title logo and the IP address geolocated to somewhere in Texas. Pulled it up and there was four possible locations. Quick Google Maps search, bang, you know, you got it from a, a random picture. Um, that one was a bad one, it's not open anymore, but it also showed the uh, point of sale system directly on the controllable camera that you could just kind of look down at, so no good. Uh, the Walking Dead. Uh, I had a trip to Atlanta last year, and the weekend after I got back, uh, I just noticed something in the background. You know, that, that attention to detail comes in handy when you're doing OSINT stuff. Um, so, hey, that looks really familiar back there. So, watch a little further. I see another scene with that same parking garage. You know what? I walked right by there. Pull up Google Earth. All of a sudden, you can get the address. 163 Carnegie Way. That's where the tent zombies were in the Skywalk. More geolocation. Uh, EXIF data is my favorite, especially as a digital forensic analyst. Um, some websites scrub it. Most of your social media will pull it if you put a picture online. Um, but bloggers are pretty bad um, if they're using their own hosting to uh, not be pulling it. Uh, I found a shopping blog with this photo. Obviously, he's taking a picture of a cell phone with a cell phone there. Back to the OSINT framework, um, cascading from the side there, you go images into metadata and pull up Jeffrey's exit viewer, pop that picture on there, and we're going to get what model iPhone he was using, very uh, accurate date stamp, um, and an address. The best part about some of these when they're turned on is the uh, the angle of orientation, where the, where the person was standing as they took that picture. Exif data is fun. Validate the findings. We can pull it up on Google Maps and flip the picture. It looks pretty accurate. All right. Uh, I've got all of the links from this talk uh, on my website, learnallthethings.net slash creepyosint. Um, so if you want to uh, take a look at some of the tools, there's a lot of good uh, blogs and podcasts and stuff on there that if you're interested in OSINT, I would highly recommend checking those things out. Um, they're one of those things where you start getting into it and it, you watch something and it starts making you think of data in a different way. Um, if you want to get into it, spend some time on the, the links I threw out there. Uh, if you have any questions, you can hit me up on email. Um, that's me on Twitter. I'm at Beowulf88. Um, that's the end of my talk, guys. I made it. Any, uh, thanks. Any questions out there? Sir. Yeah, and from a forensic standpoint, I'm very careful when I actually go out online uh, when it comes to an investigation. Um, the disclaimer, most of my exercises and stuff I did here were definitely not tied to uh, client work. Um, so if I've been able to kind of incorporate OSINT to some of my forensic stuff, but I'm still kind of learning um, how far the lawyer, lawyers will take that stuff um, when it comes to court and putting it in front of a judge. So that's that's something that I'm still kind of figuring out at the moment. Thanks for putting me in the slide. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, yeah. Um, private investigators dumpster dive a lot. Um, it's completely legal to do. If, if you put your stuff out on the curb, it's not your private property anymore. So I, our guys will definitely you know, go in the trash if it, if it behooves them for a case. Any other questions? Sir. Is it really dumpster diving anymore or is it just stick the cell phone in and take pictures? Um, <laughs> if it was me, yeah, uh, I think it, we're going to, you know, use the shortcuts there. Um, you know, there's a whole debate of, of whether or not, you know, social engineering produces OSINT. You know, we talk about that ethical slide, um, you know, it, they've opened their mouth and made the information public at that point. So is it OSINT or did you get it in a, a crappy way? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. A lot of those sites I know are like paid for free use, um, but they're using public information that I'm assuming they pull from public databases somewhere. So is there, is there always a way that you can kind of get around that and go to your own or, or access to the kind of public databases? The, he's asking if the public databases, um, if you look into the opt-outs uh, for some of the sites like uh, Pipple and Spokio, um, I don't have it in my slides, but there's a company that you can actually pay and they'll go through and, and hit the, uh, the major opt-out areas um, to try to pull some of your information back off the web. Um, and then if you really get into the guys that are into privacy, there's misinformation um, is one of the, the big ways that you can uh, do that. Uh, one of the podcasts in my extended links has a uh, Bazell uh, talking about signing up for, I think, Omaha Stakes with uh, bogus information or partially bogus information. You know, use your real address and a fake name or, you know, your real name and a, and a bad address and, and sign up for some of these sites that are, you know, the value pack coupon company that turn around and, and poach that to everybody under the sun. And uh, you, you will create quite a, a deceptive trail of your own information doing that. All right. I don't have any other questions. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you coming out.